As Netta's remains are brought into the church, can I invite you please to stand? May the grace and peace of God our Father, the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and their Holy Spirit be with us as we gather in prayer this day, reminding us of our shared faith and hope in the resurrection. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I welcome you to the celebration of Mass today, the record Mass for the repose of the soul of Netta Deegan, your uh, relative and friend. I know there are many uh, in the subsequent generations to Netta, uh, children more grandchildren and yet more great-grandchildren. So those of you who are here and representing those who are not yet able to be here, I thank you for your presence um, and I assure you of our shared prayer as a parish community for the repose of Netta soul, but also for the comfort and consolation of you in, in your time of loss for someone who has been such a significant figure in your family for so long. We were able to carry Netta's body into church. That's the first time we've been able to do that for um, 16 months. And uh, I'm sure it means a lot to you. It certainly means a great deal to me because it suggests that uh, those ways in which we bid farewell to our loved ones, a very direct sign of us leaving someone behind leaving them in the presence of God and going on our own path, not unaware of the effect they've had in our lives, but yet without them physically is a very tangible sign of what we do when we give a loved one back to God. And families have not been able to do those kind of things. And it's made, uh, I think, all our lives immensely difficult. And as we um, edge forward with hope, um, it might seem peculiar to say what we're doing at a funeral is a, a sign of hope, but in fact everything we do at a funeral is a sign of hope because we're giving back to God and we're professing our faith that Netta shares in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. I thank you that as well as observing our protocols of masks and distance and track and trace and the understanding that we are briefer and fewer than we would normally be. Nonetheless, we gather in prayer. And in welcoming you, I welcome those who join us online too. I thank you for your presence. Please join us in prayer. The centre of the Catholic funeral liturgy is, of course, not a dead person, but the risen Lord. And Netta's sharing in the resurrection, first of all, in her baptism, 
St. Paul writes, going into the waters of baptism is like going into the tomb with Christ, so that just as he was raised to new life, we too come from the waters of baptism to live life anew and to know the promise of life eternal. So Netta, those of us who are baptised, we are already sharers in the death and resurrection of Christ and called to live accordingly, which the scriptures will speak to us of today. And it's why, as I begin, and I'll do so as I end, I'll sprinkle Netta's remains with the waters of the baptismal font. A reminder that going into the waters of baptism, she went into the tomb with Christ, so that when she was baptised, she shared Christ's resurrection. My dear brothers and sisters, we believe that the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel in death. Confident then that God always remembers the good we've done and forgives us our failures, let us pray, asking God to gather Netta to himself. Lord, in our grief we turn to you, are you not the God of love, always ready to hear our cries? Listen to our prayers for your servant Netta, whom you've called from this world. Lead her to your kingdom of light and of peace, and count her among the saints in glory. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. So at Requiem Mass we pray for the forgiveness of sins for Netta, but we also recognise any time we gather for the celebration of the liturgy in the presence of God, we recognise our own frailty and our own failure but we recognise equally the loving forgiveness of God our Father and we ask not to be burdened by our failures but to be filled with hope by recognising the Lord's forgiveness You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who are mercy for sinners and happiness for saints, give, we pray, to your servant Netta, for whom today we perform the fraternal offices of burial, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you promise, so that on the day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, she may stand before your face. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Can I invite you to sit now? We'll listen to the Word of God, to the Holy Scriptures. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own Son, but gave him up to benefit us all, we may be certain. After such a gift that he will not refuse anything he can give, could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? No. He not only died for us, he rose from the dead, and there at God's right hand he stands and pleads for us. Nothing, therefore, can come between us and the love of Christ even if we are troubled or worried or being persecuted or lacking food or clothes 
or being threatened or even attacked. These are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth, nor any created thing can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You who dwell in the shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for life, say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. The snare of the fowler will never capture you, and famine will bring you no fear. Under his wings, your refuge, his faithfulness, your shield. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. You need not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Though thousands fall about you, Near you it shall not come, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. For to his angels he's given a command to guard you in all of your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand, and hold you hold you in the palm of his hand. To hear the words of the gospel, I invite you please to stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord.
Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill, and there he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak, and this is what he taught them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the gentle, they shall have the earth for their heritage. Blessed are those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, they shall have mercy shown them. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted in the cause of right, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I can invite you to sit for a moment. Friday proclaimed for us the reading from Paul's letter to the early church in Rome. Nothing can come between us and the love of God, he says. And he lists powers or forces that might try to do so. And one by one he dismisses them as being feeble in comparison to the power of God. I don't know about you, but I kind of envy him, his certainty. He seems unshakable in his belief in what he says. And sometimes I don't feel quite so unshakable. In fact, I can reflect on times when I have been shaken. So where does that come from, that certainty? Because it's not from some naive piety. Paul's far from being a fool. He knows about persecution. He's been flogged and stoned and beaten, thrown out of towns and cities frequently. He knows the price of the folly of the gospel. And yet he affirms again and again and again the unshakable nature of God's loving support and presence in all our lives. Where does it come from? Well, if we can look at the world through the eyes of somebody like Paul, maybe we get an inkling of it. The big change in Paul's life, he thought, was his baptism. He was a devout and observant Jew. He was already a member of the people of God, the chosen people. He already sought to understand God at work in the world and had already sought to live that reality for the good of others and for the upbuilding of his own life, faith and family. And yet there came a challenge It's a well-known challenge, we we know it well, the road to Damascus. And as a result of that, he was baptised. And as he says, he shared then in the death and resurrection of Christ. Something that was part of him, he allowed to die in order to take on something new. So, baptism was the key moment in Paul's life. It wasn't his conversion. Indeed, it wasn't going to be his death. Because all that happened when you died, as far as Paul was concerned, was that you moved from being a member of the family of God here on earth, as someone baptised, to being a member of the family of God in heaven. So that was a small change in comparison to the big change 
that he had effected in responding to the call of God when he was baptised. And because if we are baptised in infancy, we have no awareness of life before baptism, that kind of way of living, that kind of understanding, that kind of unshakable faith is not so apparent to us, not so obvious. But it was to Paul, and it's from that perspective that he writes, and that perspective that he invites. And Matthew shares something of that when he tells us of those teachings of Jesus, about who the blessed are. If we talk about somebody being blessed, we normally refer to them the blessed apostles and martyrs, for example, people who are already in heaven. I don't know that those qualities, peacemakers, people who hunger and thirst for justice, people who mourn, people who are peacemakers, I don't think those things are really for heaven. I don't think heaven needs peacemakers. I don't think it has people who are mourning. I don't think it has those who fight injustice within it. It has those who have been peacemakers, who have been hungering and thirsting for justice, who have been mourners in it. Because blessedness proper to the saints is how we are called to live on earth as members of the family of God through baptism. And all of us have our own way of doing that. I've only lived in Linwood for about five years. But sometimes when you live in a place and in a parish community, names come up frequently. And Netta was one of those names. Not only did she seem to be related to about half of Linwood, and you're always careful what you say. <laughs> when a parish, you never say, that lady is a wee bit funny, because you'll discover that she's related to two-thirds of the parish. And Netta was one of those. It's a temptation I, I can avoid. But she is also something of a, I would say an institution in Linwood, but that, that's not a really a, a nice word. A, maybe a national treasure would be more appropriate. I don't know whether it was her pivotal role in the co-op shop where everybody seemed to go at least once a day until she was 79. But it seemed to give her the opportunity to do good, often by stealth and often by a quiet word of encouragement. And for you as a family, maybe those words of encouragement were not always quiet, but they were always present. There's blessedness in that. That's a way of living our baptismal commitment. That's a way of being members of the family of God here on earth. <coughs> Excuse me. Which prepares us for being members of the family of God in the world to come. It means death is not a big step. Because if we've lived that blessed life here on earth by being peacemakers by being those who hunger and thirst for justice, by being those who mourn with hope as you do today, by being peacemakers as opposed to warmongers. That's a blessing that's proper to the members of the family of God, proper to those who are baptised, and proper then to those who will go on from here, living the life of the members of the family of God to heaven to live again the life of the members of the family of God. I think those of you who knew Netta well, particularly those who are of her family in three generations, have a wonderful example and a wonderful legacy. You've received a lot. I think you have a great deal to give. And I would encourage you to give of it and indeed yourselves generously, just as Netta did. In so many ways, her life was at the service of others, of her family, and of this broader community 
in who she was and in what she did. Perhaps it would be good for us to honour her memory by imitating that example and by recognising as we do so we speak as Paul spoke and we say that despite other forces at work in our world nothing will come between us and the love of God poured out in Christ Jesus and our lives of witness to that fact To offer our prayers of intercession, I invite you please to stand. Each prayer ends with the invocation, Lord, in your mercy, to which I invite you to respond. Hear our prayer. For Netta, in baptism she was given the pledge of life eternal. May she now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our sister received the body of Christ, the bread of life. May she be raised up on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. For our deceased relatives and friends, for all who have helped us, encouraged us, supported us and loved us. May they have the reward of their goodness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all of those fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, that they may see God face to face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Netta, may they be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here to pray in faith, we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the prayers of your people. So hear us as we pray for Netta. Cleanse her and all the faithful departed of sin. Grant them the fullness of redemption. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. I can invite you to sit now and we'll prepare the altar for the, with the gifts of bread and wine with which we celebrate Mass. <coughs> Let's stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, his holy church. Be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant Netta, on whose funeral day we offer this sacrifice, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her or any human fault have afflicted her, she may, by your loving gifts, be alive this day 
in your presence. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For in him the hope of resurrection has dawned so that those saddened by the certainty of death might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life is changed and not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so, with the angels and archangels, with the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as together with all the saints we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to kneel for the Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph her spouse, the Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to life eternal, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I can invite you to stand. And together we pray to God our Father in the words the Lord Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. 
socially distance, we offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who join us online and who therefore can't receive Holy Communion, we pray and act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually to my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ Lead us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. For uh, Holy Communion, I'll sanitise and then I'll come round where you're seated. So if you'd like to receive Communion, if you stand, and I'll distribute Holy Communion to you. If you're far into a bench, if you don't mind coming out into the aisle, it'll save me uh, leaning over anyone.
Let's stand and pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in this sacrament of his body and blood, food for our journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Etta may come to the eternal table of Christ's children in heaven. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Trusting in God, we've prayed together for Netta, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see her again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another with our shared faith in the resurrection of Christ Jesus. I end our mass as I began it, sprinkling Netta's remains with the waters of the baptismal font. A reminder that in going into that font, she went into the tomb with Christ. So that just as he was raised to new life, we too come from the waters of baptism to live life anew and to know the promise of eternal life. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Netta in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with them on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you bestowed upon her in this life, the ascents to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us, listen to our prayers, open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us to remain to comfort one another with the assurances of our faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister forever. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take Netta to her place of rest. <laughs>